Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Crafty Beer Reviews. Today, I will be reviewing a collaboration between the Veil and Trillium. This is Extra Cream. So this is an oat double IPA. They are using oat malt, oat flour, and oat milk in this one, along with Citra and Simcoe Lupulin Powder, which is a pretty cool up and coming thing, you guys are going to see that a lot more soon. They're also using hot pellets and then they're using a touch, and they do say a touch of Enigma hops in this as well. So, really looking forward to checking this one out with you guys. Got to give a big shout out to, to my main man, Dustin, out of Virginia, for the hookup on this one. Dustin, you rock, buddy. Thank you so much. Got to say, too, I love the little kind of Dunkin' Donuts thing they even have, you know. Cream, skim, sugar, blue sweetener, pink sweetener on the back here, which is kind of funny. Virginia runs on Dippa. Hopefully, nobody at Dunkin' Donuts gets pissed off. Also, side notes, I keep wanting to call this extreme cream, not extra cream. So if I fuck up and I say that, it's my bad, guys. But maybe that's what it should have been called. Let's go ahead and check out the aroma. Very citrusy, very tropical right up front. Yeah, like get pineapple, mango, definitely some citrus, like orange peel. I'm also getting some dankness, like some nice earthy, green, resiny dankness in there too. But yeah, definitely the mango, definitely... Kind of like candy tropical fruit notes. It's very citrusy, very tropical smelling. Not super aggressive though for a double IPA. It's not real in your face. It's not over the top, especially for you know a brewery like Trim that usually just dry hops the shit out of everything. But yeah, it just smells like very definitely very tropical, but dank at the same time. Other than that, not getting a whole lot out of this one, guys. Let's go ahead check out the taste. Mmm. So up front, bittersweet grapefruit, orange, orange peel. There's definitely that mango and pineapple kind of note to this one too. But on the finish, there's this big kind of yeastiness. And it's really thick, it's really heavy. The mouthfeel on this one is also very, very thick, very heavy. It almost kind of makes me think of like what those milkshake IPAs attempt to do with the creaminess. And this one's creamy, but it almost feels like heavier than that. Almost almost like a, a whipped, not a whipped cream, like a, a can, I don't know. It's, it's very creamy, but it just has this heavier than like a creamy, milky kind of thing going on too. Yeah, lots of citrus, mango, pineapple up front. Very bright. It does have some nice earthy dankness to this one. A little bit of like a sticky green hop resin kind of taste as well. And then, yeah, there is a little bit of sweetness to this too. Not very bitter, but wow, yeah. Big, big yeasty, just yeasty, yeasty, yeasty. It's like yeast overload for this one. I've seen some notes online that said there was like a peppery, spicy kind of burn to this one. I've seen it before and I felt I know what you guys are talking about it's not like a peppery spiciness it's actually just there's so much yeast I think this is one that would could have used some conditioning it tastes like it was released a little bit early I've also had a lot of treehouse and trillium beers where if you drink them too soon they're just very yeasty they're not you know it's almost like muddled kind of hop flavors and this one does have a little bit of that now that being said too at time of recording, this is almost three weeks old, so it's had a little bit of time to mellow out. Maybe not enough. Maybe I should have given it a couple more weeks to really, like, can condition in the fridge. I've noticed that with, again, a lot of these, you know, very hazy, you know, very yeasty New England-style IPAs and double IPAs. You've got that thing where it's just, it's kind of yeast overload, and that's what's happening here, which is really unfortunate because... It's taking what probably would be a super awesome beer and bringing it down quite a few pegs, in my opinion. Yeah, the mouthfeel is insane, though. Super creamy. But again, it's almost just got this heavy kind of body to it. A little bit of bitterness, not much, though. 
But yeah, that yeastiness is just super overpowering. It's it's all in the finish. That's kind of all you taste, which is kind of disappointing. I've had beers, again, if you drink Trails and Trillium too soon, in my opinion, that's what it's like. If, you know, a lot of the hoof hearted stuff, especially when they were brand new, if you drink it too fresh, I feel like you also get that big yeastiness. And that's what's happening here, unfortunately. It's not a bad beer. It's not a great beer. I, I love the mouthy. I love the can design. I like the aroma quite a bit. But that big, again, it just, it doesn't taste like it's 100% finished is really what the deal is. And for that, I'm a little disappointed. So in terms of rating, guys, I'm going with an 8 out of 10. I do enjoy it. Again, the aroma is awesome. The mouth feels awesome. It's got this crazy, you know, heaviness. I do kind of question the use of oat flour because I question the time anybody feels the need to use flour in their IPAs whatsoever. I know the haze craze has gotten everyone like in a fucking mind, you know, like just kind of thing going on. But you know what? At the end of the day, it is what it is. Dustin, I appreciate it, guys. If you have tried this one, let me know down in the comments below, especially if you have experienced this overly yeastiness in some of these double IPAs in the New England style. Cool. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this review. If you liked it, you know to hit that like button for me. You know to subscribe if you want to see more videos. And of course, I hope whatever you're doing involves good craft beer. Cheers.